In this video, we're going to take a look at functions of time. Now, this is the first video in our chapter on variable acceleration. And the main idea behind this chapter is to take a look at how we can use calculus with kinematics. Okay. So what I've got here on the screen is two velocity time graphs that will help hopefully demonstrate this idea. And these velocity time graphs might look a little bit different to what we are used to. Okay. And the reason for that is because the velocity is changing over time. So I've got two examples here. The first example here is where it's increasing over time. This is increasing. And then this example underneath here is when it's decreasing. So we'll do that underneath. So this is decreasing. Okay. So for the first example here, the velocity time graph on top, what I can see is the rate of the velocity is increasing and the gradient of the curve here is also increasing over time. Okay. So for that reason, we can express the velocity as a function of time. If my horizontal axis here is time, my vertical axis is the velocity. And like I said, I can represent that as a function of time. Same again here with the decrease in velocity time graph. The velocity is decreasing over time, the rate of increase. Okay, it's decreasing. And then same again here for the gradient of this curve, that is also decreasing over time. Okay, so again, for that reason, I can also express that as a function of time. So this video is a very basic introduction to this idea and this concept. So let's just take a look at one basic question just to finish with here. So if we take a look at this question here. What we've got now is a particle that moves in a straight line such that its velocity v meters per second at time t seconds is given by this quadratic equation here. Okay. So three parts of this. Part A, I just want to find the initial velocity of the particle. So when you see this word here or this phrase of the initial velocity, Straight away, you should be thinking about t equals zero. Okay. So what do we get when t is equal to zero? Well, all I need to do here is substitute t equals zero into our quadratic here. So in that case, we get v is equal to two lots of zero squared minus nine lots of zero plus four. Well, in that case, this will be equal to zero. This will also be equal to zero. I just get left with four here. So in that case, the velocity, the initial velocity of the particle is four meters per second there. Okay, so that's our solution to part A. Part B then we're asked to find the velocity of the particle when t is equal to five. Same idea as part A here, but in this case, we're just substituting t is equal to five now into our quadratic. So again, same idea, v is gonna be equal now. So it's gonna be two lots of five squared two lots of five squared minus nine lots of five plus four. So let's evaluate this here. Well, five squared is 25 times that by two would give me 50. Nine times five is 45, so that's minus 45 and then plus four. So in that case, 50 minus 45 would give me five plus the four, I get nine there. So the velocity of the particle when t is equal to five is nine meters per second there. Okay, and that's our solution to part B. And then to finish with here, we've got part C where it says find the values of T where the particle is instantaneously at rest. So when the particle is instantaneously at rest, that is when the velocity here is equal to zero. So for part C, the idea here is that V is equal to zero. So what I'm going to do now is set my quadratic here equal to zero. So I'm going to get two. 2, sorry, 2t two squared minus 9t plus 4 is all equal to 0. And what I'm going to do now is hopefully factorize this, okay? If it doesn't factorize, then obviously you'd have to solve that by either completing the square or using the quadratic formula. But in this case, this does actually um, factorize here. So what I'm going to get here is 2t minus 1. And I'm also going to get t um, minus 4 here, okay? So this is equal to zero. Obviously, you could expand this here to double check. So I'm going to get 2t squared. I'm going to get minus 8t and then minus 1t here. So that's going to give me the minus 9t and minus 1 times minus 4 will give me positive 4. So we know that works. So like we said, we get two solutions here. My first solution is when 2t minus 1 is equal to zero. So in that case, if we solve that, I get that t is equal to a half there. And for the next solution, that's when t minus 4 is equal to 0. And in that case, we get t is equal to 4 there. Okay. And there we have it. So 
at 0.5 seconds and at 4 seconds there for part C. Okay, and there we have it, so that's our solution to that question overall. And that brings us to the end of this video on functions of time. In the next video, we're going to take a look at using differentiation.